Let me ask first about your performance. Um, it seems like a small number, but with such uh, when you're working on such large figures, uh, and as I mentioned, it actually beat the benchmark, it's an achievement. How did you get here? What was your strategy? Okay, yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, no, so as you say, I think uh, the third quarter for us was a uh, tale of two halves. Uh, I think we, through the summer, saw a continuation of the good equity markets we saw in the first half. Uh, and you saw the uh, interest rates falling as well. And then something ch happened in uh, late August uh, into September where uh, equity markets came down again and, and the interest rates started to, f to rise. So overall, as you said, uh, for the quarter as a whole, uh, we ended the, essentially flat, uh, which is it, it's an okay result for us. Uh, we did manage, as you say, also to outperform the benchmark by 25 basis points, which is uh, which is a very good result actually with the kind of relative risk that we're running. So we're happy with that. Yeah. Um, but but we were broadly invested in the equity markets and the bond markets, and and, and we follow them closely. Yes, you're, you're broadly invested in equities. Good morning to you, Trond, and in fixed income and in real estate and now in renewable infrastructure. Do you go looking for new asset classes at this point with inflation becoming such a story, Trond, and returns available uh, on fixed income markets maybe not delivering what you want versus inflation? Where do you go in an inflation environment like this? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, not many places to hide, uh, really. Uh, so we, we kind of uh, a long, we're very long-term fund, right? So, uh, so the uh, the bulk of the portfolio is made up of 70% global equities, and by that token, we're, we're owning 1.5% of all listed equities essentially in the world. Um, and then we're adding uh, a few asset classes. You mentioned real estate, which was added 10 years ago, and uh, quite recently we added. Uh, uh, unlisted re infrastructure for renewable energy as well. So those are new asset classes for us, uh, which brings uh, diversification and stability and hopefully also some more inflation protection uh, going forward. Do you get a bit more experimental, Trond? I mean, we spend a lot of time talking about Bitcoin at new record levels. This might sound a little bit out there for, for a sovereign wealth fund, but we're hearing a lot of investors talking about how this is increasingly accepted, uh, maybe just as a speculative asset or for some uh, as part of their investment strategy. Do you have any conversations at all around crypto, Trond? No, I think uh, being experimental is not part of our DNA, actually. We are a very large long-term fund, so everything we do is very deliberate. We're not jumping on the latest uh, craze or bandwagon. And so uh, Bitcoin is, is absolutely not something that we're uh, explicitly looking into. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're looking into the large asset classes that are out there. Uh, because we have such much, so much capital to deploy, we, we just need uh, liquidity and stability. Okay, so you're not necessarily interested in crypto, but let's talk more about your push into renewables and renewable infrastructure. Given that Norway also is attempting to get to net zero in the coming next few decades, how will that impact your management of the fund? Well, uh, it's kind of two, two, two parts to that, right? We're, we're managing the fund as a surplus fund. So, so the first part is, is really uh, a question of the balancing of the budget. Uh, uh, in the Norwegian governments, uh, and there the oil revenues still play a, a significant part. Uh, I think everybody in Norway is, is cognizant that this is a, this is a cash flow that is going to be uh, falling uh, in the years to come. So, so there's a one debate being had, which is what, what is new oil, so as we call it here in Norway, uh, what is the new uh, industries that we're going to um, build here. Um, the other part is, is another that, that's for the fund. Um, you know. Uh, Climate risk in general is, is, is a big risk also for a financial investor and a long-term investor like the fund. So we're, mm -hmm. we're actually working quite a lot with the companies trying to, to influence them to be better at their disclosure, better at the target setting and so forth. And then, yeah. as you mentioned, we have added the infrastructure on renewable energy, which is not to, to invest in, in, in a specifically green manner, but it's, uh, it's, it's diversification. And, and we see that this is a growing asset class. Well, obviously, climate is the E in ESG, and then there's also the SG, the social and governance aspect. How are you thinking about that, Trond? Well, it's, it's an integral part to, to what we do. Uh, we want to be a long-term responsible investor. Uh, and so this is actually something that's been uh, front and center in, in everything we've done for the last 20 years, I would say. It's nothing new to us. Uh, and what we really do is to, uh, to work on three pillars. We're, 
we're working with uh, different standards that there's regulators since we're kind of invested in the whole world uh, we think it's a good thing that uh, if if the bar is raised for everyone it's probably a good thing for for everyone the world and us as an investor in them uh, the second part we do is to make sure that we are an active owner of the companies. We own 1.5% and sometimes more of the largest companies in the world. So we have a very active dialogue uh, and we make sure that our voting is consistent with uh, being a responsible investor. And the last thing, uh, and not least, we do is, is also to slightly tilt the portfolio out of industries uh, or sectors that we think are not on a sustainable path and then tilt the portfolio slightly into more sustainable business models.